All right, y'all, quick Bluefin LTS status. I'm just going to go ahead and start with um, the demo here. So I'm going to go over everything that we've been working on with Bluefin LTS. This is our uh, CentOS Stream 10 based Bluefin. And uh, the best way to do it is I'm just going to take you through the demo, getting it installed. And I'm going to give you a quick status report. We are on track uh, to ship in September. End of September. We're actually going to time it to be right before the DevConf US uh, conference in Boston. So first things that you will notice uh, compared to other uh, CentOS, CentOS stream um, images is we have a live CD out of the box. So you're able to kind of install this on a machine. You can try it out and you click on this little dinosaur. We're going to go directly into the installation there. Um, so you can use it as a live CD, kind of check to see if, if your hardware works that kind of stuff. And uh, this is the new Anaconda web UI, which James um, got up and working. So it's very, it's a very fast installer. It's very uh, straightforward. Like you pretty much just give it the disc. We blast it all the way. Um, all of the flat packs that you need and everything are included. So uh, while that's going, this, this takes a while, but I kind of wanted to show it to you. Um, Hopefully someday we'll get some nicer branding here. We've also had some improvements to the website that I want to talk about. Delphic Melody showed up and started doing things. The first thing that, that you will notice is all the dinosaurs are um, randomized now. So we put all the dinosaurs back on here. I used to rotate these manually, and now you could just get a random one each time, and they're pretty cool. This is the official logo, by the way, if you're not sure of that one. Uh, that's the leaping one. Uh, Carl here. And then this is the, uh, this is one of the latest ones. This is Dakota Raptor. So uh, we go through the website and the biggest changes that you've seen here are our download pickers. So these are amazing. I was kind of looking for a, something that was like CoreOS. Like if you look at flat car Linux, this is a very um, cloud thing. Usually for these container OSs, they have these boxes that kind of tell you the streams that you want to choose from. So I kind of wanted a version of that uh, for consumers. Um, obviously we have too many products, so we'll, we'll see what happens here uh, in the fall, but you can pick LTS, which is in beta, which what we're talking about today, uh, GTS and then Bluefin. So if you go, you click here, select whether you want X86 or ARM and bam, you've got the uh, check some here. You can download the ISO. It's re really, really, just a spectacular job. Like I very much was looking for a Pokemon card thing. Um, and we have it now. So that's amazing. Um, these version numbers and stuff on the website, all update live according to the actual change log. So after we do a release automation happens and figures all this out. So that should hopefully clarify a bunch of download things for y'all. I know that download picker has been probably the worst part of the project for, <laughs> for years. So now, now, um, now we have three, so that is a, a huge improvement over what we had before. I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're trying to do here with uh, Bluefin LTS. Of course, this is all in the documentation. Um, let's check here. Of course, I do want to let you know that, of course, the installer supports dark mode, you know. Uh, so while that's still going, I'm going to go ahead and go over the docs here. So what you're going to get here with Bluefin LTS is exactly like Bluefin. It should feel exactly like Bluefin. Um, it shouldn't be any different. There's a few major differences though. This is based on CentOS instead of Fedora. So you're not gonna get live updates like every six months where your entire operating system is upgrading. Um, these are Bootsy images. So like we, that kind of doesn't matter anymore for you as far as an end user. Uh, but it does matter for us because we gotta do all those changes in the back end. So if you have a thing that will just last for five years after you don't touch it, um, that's, that's good for us. And because this was a from scratch implementation, um, we were able to get ARM images up and running right away. So if you have a Mac, uh, like an M3 Mac or something like that, and you want a Linux, you can VM this, and that's that's the way to go. So it's, just, it's basically the same packages. It's literally the exact same OS almost. Like if I'm sitting next to you in a plane, you wouldn't notice, you wouldn't be able to tell that I was using any Bluefin from one or the other, uh, which is what we want because... We don't want to care about individual versions of the OS that should be invisible to me. Um, so we're trying to hide that from you as much as possible. 
Um, so it is, it, it is good for us. So you do end up with an older kernel. You end up with 6.12.0, and this is the same kernel as a CentOS Stream 10. Um, and uh, so after this, you will reboot. However, so one of the things that nobody likes about LTS is you get stuck with an old kernel after a while. So we have a, actually have an HWE branch that will match the kernel build of the Bluefins and Fedora. It'll just be built on CentOS. So that's part of the Kmod SIG uh, that we're consuming those kernels. And then after your installation, it's just like quote unquote regular Bluefin. Uh, you come in, select your business. There it is. Sorry about the live resizing there. Always always ensure you pick your favorite dinosaur on install none of this should be surprising to you i hope um the entire point is is bluefin lts to be kind of like your work your work machine and you just don't really mess with it so uh, i'm running this on my framework desktop i'm not on my framework desktop today uh, that one's upstairs but um so the kernel does get backported fixes and all of that kind of good stuff. So um, if you're on a, like something like a framework desktop, it's, it's a great kernel for that. However, we do have an opt-in kernel um, that you'll be able to kind of uh, run with the newer stuff. And that gets you that hardware enablement. I think at some point we'll refresh the ISOs to default to the newer kernel, but we can worry about that next year. 6.12.0 is fine. I think it's, some of you are, are like me are also tired of kernel regressions and you kind of want to, you want to put your work machine on something like this. So um, a few differences here. Bizarre is the flat pack. Uh, we wanted to do this for a few reasons. A, you know, we want to backport nothing. Um, so we're still working on this. The config with the curation has not yet landed. We're, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, however, Bizarre just got into flat hub. So it's revving, revving a few point releases and moving pretty quickly. So we figure by the time uh, releases this should be good to go. So this is good. It's just as fast as it is on normal Bluefin. We'll get we'll get that tab sorted, um, and then we should be good to go. Other than that, it's pretty boring. The GNOME you'll notice though is a modern GNOME. This is a backported GNOME um, into LTS. I've always believed that uh, just because you're in LTS doesn't mean old software's better in some cases i think you just want well-tested software so uh james riley and jordan p jordan's from gnome have been working together on all our packaging to make sure that this was squared away it was um bringing gnome back to uh, centos stream is something uh that i'm really proud of i'm i think it's amazing and having a gnome developer actually go through the packaging uh and check and we did we did find some things so that that um always feels good when you have a relationship uh, with an upstream and that finds bugs that you can fix. This is all great. You will find all that stuff in James's copper. He's going to be working somewhere in the CentOS SIG land. I'm so unfamiliar how a lot of that stuff is organized on, on getting a copper going in a SIG somewhere. Uh, obviously we don't want to be the only GNOME um, in the, uh, in the enterprise Linux space. So we'll just be the best one. Uh, so with that, this is pretty much all ready to go. There's a few things that are missing here for you. Uh, ZFS hasn't landed yet. So that's going to be something that we're working on over the next month. Um, and the HWE branch with that New York kernel that I'm talking about, that's still ungated. We haven't turned on secure boot for that yet and that kind of stuff. So there's some things that we're going to tighten up with that. However, just about everything else is finished when it comes to um, stuff. So if you're like kind of waiting for a month for things to settle down or things like that, you kind of don't need to, unless you're waiting for ZFS or you really want to get on that new kernel right away. Um, cause uh, most of the major components have already landed. Actually, this has been a beta for almost 10 months. Tulip and I started this 10 months tulip. Um, and 99% of that time was like waiting. Um, and for a while we didn't, we didn't know what kernel we wanted and we, we switch back and forth and things like that. But generally speaking, as a workload or as an operating system, it's fine. It's it's CentOS Stream 10. We actually end up being the last uh, Bootsy image to ship. Uh, I think Helium shipped like last month. 
So uh, in a lot in a lot of ways, we started first, but but finished last. But for us, getting that that new web UI installer with the live CD was pretty important to us. And James has just been rocking and rolling. Uh, so we're kind of kind of figuring out. Um, you know, where LTS is going to live. So some of you might be asking, what does this mean for Bluefin GTS, right? So if we go back to that website, um, oh, and we have GDX as well. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but if you go back to the website, um, you know, if, he, if LTS is rock solid, we're, why does GTS need to live anymore, right? So this is one of those things that's a historical thing. Obviously, we started off with GTS, it was the first thing we made. Uh, then we added Bluefin, then we added LTS. So now we kind of have to look at it. Um, I think having three SKUs is obviously very much so confusing. So uh, we're never gonna get rid of uh, GTS, of course. I think it's more of a, what do you present the user as a as a default? And I think, I think Bluefin LTS can compete in that regard. And of course, we'll just have to find out because we measure everything. So we'll see what, what you all use. Um, I think I've covered any, everything except Bluefin GDX. This is our NVIDIA image. It comes with CUDA. Uh, this is going to end up being kind of our AI workshop where we're going to be uh, playing with a lot of local AI tools. I want to get some like nice kick-ass command line local AI things. Um, but we want it to be light, opt-in. We don't want to shove it in your face. Like uh, there's so many things where open source AI could be useful on an open source desktop. Unfortunately, all the desktop products of AI are pretty awful and nobody wants them. Uh, so we are kind of taking it from a different perspective is we start from like what an NVIDIA workstation would look like and what that person needs to succeed. And then we add those open source tools because we know there's an open source community there. And then whatever is appropriate, we slurp into the rest of Bluefin GDX. So this is awesome. This is gonna be on a few machines at Kubeflow, or I'm sorry, at KubeCon and some other conferences, those awesome AMP or workstations, still working with those folks to try to get these demos out there. So hopefully this box, yeah, these are 128 CPUs, by the way, that's what that looks like in, in, um, in Mission Center, if you didn't know. So hopefully you'll get a chance to see one of these at a conference or something and play with them. And it's also just normal Bluefin. So uh, GDX is gonna be pretty great. Uh, here for AI, and I'm really looking forward to kind of showing that off to my friends at NVIDIA, see what they think. So with that, thank you for trying it. As always, leave your feedback and smash that like and subscribe button, blah, 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 all that good stuff, and have a great day.